Tigers are typically viewed as aggressive, deadly, and unforgiving animals, but the young cub Atwood discovered in the forest was severely damaged and was unable to harm anyone. Years later, he assumed the tiger had long since forgotten about him. But when they finally crossed paths again, its response completely floored him. Atwood was a destitute mountain village resident who lived alone and had no direct family. He had never had the means to pursue a higher education, but was a smart, kind man who never backed down from a challenge. So when he was offered the position of forest ranger, he didn't hesitate to accept. The job sounded perfect for him. He had spent all of his life in the mountains and knew the area like the back of his hands. Every two days, Atwood would walk through the forest and document the things he saw for his team of rangers. One winter morning during a routine patrol, he stumbled upon something that would change his life forever. That day, the forest was covered in thick snow and almost unrecognizable. Atwood had to stop every few steps to catch his breath, because walking around in deep snow with his mountain gear on his back was really exhausting. During one of these quick breaks, he heard faint whines coming from somewhere very close to him. He hesitated and tried to locate the source of the noise, but the moaning abruptly stopped when he made the slightest movement. Atwood believed he was having hallucinations and hearing unreal sounds. He heard it once again as he was going to continue walking. The sound was this time heard close to a shrub in front of him. He cautiously moved in the direction of the sound and noticed a head poking out of the snow. It was a cub tiger. The animal kept whining and shaking its head to shed the snow. Atwood looked at it carefully and noticed bloody bite marks on its body. It also seemed like it had a broken leg. The ranger immediately sprung into action to help the cub. He picked it up and held it close to his chest as he quickly made his way down the mountain and back towards the village until he reached his house. Atwood made the tiny cub a bed out of his old clothes and found medicinal herbs to help stop the bleeding. Then he gathered some sticks from the garden and tied them to its broken leg for support. The cub whined but let him apply some more herbs to its wounds. It had already been a long day, but even as dinner time approached, Atwood couldn't think about anything other than the baby tiger in his home. He thought it must be hungry, but he wasn't sure what to feed it. Suddenly, he remembered that his dog had recently given birth and had a fresh supply of milk. Atwood was able to gather some of it into a bowl and brought it back to the tiny tiger cub, hoping it would be enough for it to survive the night. Despite being worn out and in pain, the tiger appeared to be interested in the milk. It gently started licking the milk from the bowl with its tongue, while Atwood held the bowl close to its mouth. That, in the ranger's opinion, was encouraging. He hoped that since hunger is typically not experienced by living things that are near death, the cub will survive. Atwood kept spending his days caring for the little tiger. He continued to give it dog milk, and the cub grew bigger and stronger every day. Its wounds eventually healed, but a noticeable scar was left on its leg. When he realized that it had become some sort of pet, Atwood decided to name it Gore. After six months, the frail cub had grown into a majestic tiger. Gore would often accompany Atwood on his patrol throughout the mountain. It was during these walks that Atwood noticed how Gore would frolic and play in the grass like a huge house cat. The ranger was glad that Gore was happy, yet he couldn't help but notice that Gore didn't behave like a typical tiger. For this reason, Atwood came to the difficult decision to release Gore into the wilderness. He brought Gore up to the mountain and said goodbye. But when he started to walk away, the tiger followed him as it had done for the past six months. Atwood didn't know how to make Gore stay in the mountain. He tried yelling and shouting and his plan seemed to work. Gore had never seen Atwood angry before. Frightened, the tiger ran off into the forest and his human friend went back to the village with tears in his eyes. Atwood continued to patrol the mountain but didn't see Gore for a long time. It was during one of his daily walks that his life changed forever. The ranger fainted on his trail and was found by a local villager named Bonnie, who at the time was chopping firewood in the mountains. Bonnie helped Atwood, and from that day forward, they became inseparable. After a few weeks, she told him that she felt something more than just friendly affection for him and wanted to become his girlfriend. He was more than happy to be her boyfriend, and two years later, he obtained an even better title when he became her husband. At almost 50, he even had a daughter of his own. During one of his usual walks, however, Atwood felt a tingling pain in his waist and fainted again. Luckily, Bonnie was there and able to help him one more time. It took them three hours to reach a nearby road, 
But then a passing car helped them to get to the hospital. The doctor found that Atwood's right kidney was shrinking, and his left kidney was becoming necrotic. The ranger stayed in the hospital for a few days, but he refused to have a life-saving surgery due to its high cost. When he returned home, Atwood went back to his normal life of patrolling the mountain. Three years later, though, another medical emergency caught him by surprise. This time, his kidneys were in even worse condition than before. Atwood refused the surgery again and promised he would take more breaks during his walks in the forest. Next summer, he was on patrol again when he noticed wisps of smoke rising from the mountain. The area had been plagued by forest fires, and the ranger knew something was wrong. The flames spread quickly and came very close to Atwood, who started running down the mountain as fast as he could. Unfortunately, weak from his health condition, he stumbled and fell. All of a sudden, a tiger appeared before him. Atwood didn't know what to do. The fire was behind him and getting closer by the second, and now there was a tiger in front of him, blocking his path. Atwood closed his eyes and decided to accept his fate. But what the tiger did next shocked him. When it opened its mouth, it went for his clothes instead of his flesh and started dragging him away from the flames. Dumbfounded, Atwood started crawling behind the tiger down the mountain. He was close to safety when a burning branch fell from a tree and pegged him to the ground. Although it too was burned, the tiger remained at his side. Instead, it went looking for something on the ground and returned with a large stick. He wondered what he was expected to do with that. He realized all of a sudden that the tiger intended to use the stick as a lever to break free of the tree. He was able to wriggle free of the branch and continue his dash down the mountain. Although the tiger's actions left him greatly perplexed, the time wasn't perfect to inquire about its motivations. The beast led him home, and when it was sure the human was safe and sound, it affectionately rubbed its body against his legs. That movement snapped Atwood back to reality. He had thought he was dreaming, but now he recognized his old friend Gore. Although grown and bigger, the tiger still had a long scar on his leg from the time it had broken its paw. Atwood looked at the tiger and asked out loud if it was Gore. Upon hearing its name, it looked at him and let out a long roar of appreciation. After a couple of minutes, however, the tiger made its way back to the mountain. Atwood desperately wanted his old friend to stay with him a little longer. But the animal now knew its place in the world and went back to its natural habitat. Bonnie found her husband outside their home and thanked her lucky stars for keeping him alive. However, Atwood told her that he had been saved by a tiger. She listened as he told her the story of Gore and how he had saved it when it was still a cub and how his old friend had paid him back by sparing him from impending death. He was certain that the tiger would always remember him and that he would never forget Gore. What a bizarre tale. When Atwood died in the forest that was on fire, what did you anticipate would happen? Did you realize Gore would remember him? Please share in the comments area below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you later.